welcome back to maple farm and we are starting off with a little bit of multiplayer so um there were i think four of us on at this point so i'm driving the combine we've got unexpected bill unexpectedly chasing me with a baler um monox is our cameraman at the moment and i'm pretty sure Possibly Kartek and or Eagles were also on at this point. In fact, Eagles is stood on the Merlot over there, I think, taking some pictures. So, yep, had a really fun weekend actually playing multiplayer. It was cool. We got a bunch of harvesting contracts done. But back to the business of running our dairy farm, not just DS Agri. So the, the main grass pasture is ready to be mown. Um... I was trying to decide between hay and silage and we've got loads of both and silage is worth twice as much more than twice as much three times as much or yeah, three times as much so i'm going to make grass silage probably i'm going to sell these bales out of the field so um they we're gonna get them i think in this video i get them uh all baled and wrapped but I'm going to just leave them in the field to ferment. We don't really need to do too much in this. If I need to move them, I will. But my intent is to leave them in the field, um, borrow the the big bale trailer from DS Angry and just sell them. Um, to be honest, we need the cash. So, and we've got a million litres of hay and silage stored. So I think we'll be fine food-wise for the animals. So yeah, so uh, it's gonna get some. Um, take um a lot again. The plan is we're running maize plus, obviously. So the plan is that we're going to mow this. I'm going to leave it overnight to dry, in inverted commas, a little bit. Not all the way to hay, obviously. Um, and in the morning we are going to run the tether over it to uh, make sure that it's all semi dry and then we'll get it bailed so the with maize plus the different types of grass that you can bale for silage so you've got um fresh grass or wet grass so that's mowing with our conditioner you've got conditioned grass which is what we're producing here which is where you mow with a conditioner enabled or you ted to conditioned grass um and that's also yeah that's called conditioned grass um, and that's normal base game grass, if, if you were curious in terms of fill types. And then we've got semi-dry grass, which is the next step on. And that is, you get that by tedding and that can be baled. So all three of those can be baled for silage. What's the difference? Um, when they are not yet silage, the fresh or wet bales are much heavier um, because they've got a lot of moisture in them they also hold a lower volume of grass matter essentially um and then the the conditioned bales hold a little bit more by a little bit less and then the semi-dry ones hold quite a nice amount actually and they're a little bit lighter so um if you watch my attingham series you might remember very early on i think it might have been the first time i did silage bales actually i i just did um fresh grass because like ah, it's quicker um and I had to lease a pretty beefy telehandler to actually move them and stack them. Um, that is in the end why on that series I bought the, the JCB to use as a front loader tractor because it was big enough that it could pick the bales up and it had four wheel steer. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's why if, if you're playing with Maze Plus, I would do at least conditioned grass for your silage but if you can if you've got time or if like me i have a couple of people come over and help then i would definitely go to semi-dry it for your silage because you'll get more in the bales so and that, that, that's a bit of a double-edged sword actually because you don't always want the most grass in a bale or the most anything in a bale with maize plus so think about that you know how are you feeding is a bigger bale going to work in your mix up but generally um i would go semi-dry and also it means that the bales are lighter for handling which is really nice um, and you get less bales off the field so because they're bigger uh, or they've got they've got more the way that i'm thinking of it 
is they've got more dry matter in them because there's less moisture so therefore they have more feed value and that's represented by more litres of grass in the bale. Um, huh. So um, we have GPS on this tractor now obviously because uh, we paid for it and it was a thing in the 90s we paid 15 grand to have it added. I am not using guidance steering though I am using VCA because generally I prefer to use VCA. I find it much much easier to very quickly with very little thought run GPS. So, um, And I sort of said to the guys playing on multiplayer as well is that if it's a vehicle that's got GPS on it then use VCA if you want. Instead it is up to you. Um, you know, use the one that you are most comfortable with. But I do love this tractor. The um, in fact I think this, this is the first time that I've done a significant amount of farming with the new fleet and it's really nice. The the big, um, the AT410s are really nice. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to square off the bit that we're keeping for zero grazing. Because um, obviously before I didn't make it very square. Um, yeah, the 8410s are really nice. Um, they, they've been into the shop since you saw them and had the the wheels adjusted. So they, they fit a little bit better. Um, and the fuel tank capacity um, there, there was something in the fuel tank that was stopping it filling all the way so yeah um, or the the units were wrong and i think it it held 135 liters instead of gallons i think um oh yeah the, guy, the guys were saying that they were running out of fuel stupidly quickly and uh, so they fixed that um yeah, they, the DS Agri have been hammering away at now. Um, oh, geez, words. Um, harvesting still, obviously. There were a fresh wave of harvesting contracts. Uh, cultivating, sowing. Yeah, all sorts. So, grass is mown. It's the next morning. I'm up at the supermarket selling the milk that we had. Get a bit of cash in. So, I think after this video, I switched the... Um, the wages over so that DS Agri are paying their staff their wages seems fairer to me um, but I've, this, this, so this the mowing was recorded off of multiplayer mode I think because I was having issues with lag um, this next bit is on multiplayer because I'm going to have uh, monarchs and eagles come over and help me get the silage bailed up the 13 grand for the milk stranger didn't get an environmental bonus for that that's interesting so yeah, we've got Monarchs and Eagles over here. They brought over the two 7810s from DS Agri and Monarchs is gonna tell it to um, semi-dry for us. Eagle is going to windrow it and I'm going to bail it very badly. Um, yeah, one day did we do this? I think it must've been Sunday we did this and I was wrecked from a long training run at the weekend. So yep. Yeah see someone left the combine running it's sitting there on a Sergon contract on field 30 uh, you're going to get this done it didn't actually take that long with three of us working it was kind of cool um i did get some footage from uh, from monarchs for this as well but i forgot to include it in the edit i'm afraid i am sorry mate it's uh i'm, I'm still still in a workflow where I just grab my own footage and edit video so um, but I, I'm liking including little bits of the what the other guys are working on I think it adds to the fact that this is a a series of two different bits of farming um, and I know uh, I've got a bunch of footage waiting from different people to mix into probably the next video so yeah it's uh it's really cool and now I'm really bad at watching many other YouTube farm sim people, but I've not seen anyone do this particularly. Uh, people have multiplayer series, I guess. Um, I really enjoy watching Argy's multiplayer series, um, and you know, like Kartek and I have our one that we do at the weekend, and uh, FSG and Argy have their multiplayer. But this, this I think is a little bit different. So. Um, I'm enjoying it. It sometimes frustrates me because um, they don't do things my way, but it's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, 
I'm kidding, by the way, it is fine. They, they actually, I'm, I'm mega impressed with how everyone has embraced this kind of more realistic playstyle. Um, I, I have seen seen sight of people now the uh, crash count plus one equals. Um, the uh, some of the guys who are playing on here doing their own manual whale stacking now, which is you know kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's good um, I, I really it's really added to the series it's um, it's allowing things to progress much quicker than they would have um, I'm constantly trying to balance how much of the money I pull across from DS Agri so obviously I used a bunch of money from DS Agri to buy the John Deere um, but I kind of seeded the funding of that business with the kit that I had so um, yeah it, it's going to be a balance I think um, obviously I'm doing some of the contracting work so you know um, and I guess there's that whole business owner thing that the business owner takes a chunk of the cash but yeah we'll, uh, we'll see how that pans out um, and the next thing that I really, really need to sort on here is a slurry tank. Again, we are, you know, pushing the limits of capacity for slurry in the two sheds. Um, that will ease up a bit um, in a month or so in game when I can move the the newer calves out to pasture. Um, but once winter comes, we're probably going to have to bring them back over anyway. Um, one, one, basically once grazing stops we'll, we'll get them brought back over to the main farm it'll make feeding easier through the winter and you know it's kind of you know, kind of what, what they do in the UK I get it. probably in most of Europe actually in the cows winter winter in sheds um, over winter in sheds are in sheds for the winter um, I think in, to some extent because there's nothing for them to graze on and also because you know they're going to do a lot of damage to the pastures when they're wet so yeah that's uh that's the plan on here next month should be and uh, it's not gonna be the next video but in the, but the next couple of videos will be may silage um and i'm hoping to do that as a bit of a multiplayer thing as well my current intent is to reopen the bunker silo that we have with last year's maze in and add to that um, there are some mods around that will let you do that so you know it's kind of kind of what farmers do again um, if the clamp's not completely empty they just add the fresh stuff to it so that's what we're going to do it will reset the fermented state but that doesn't matter because we don't really need the maze silage so quickly one of the things that I'm considering, so having looked at the value of hay and the value of silage and then the value of TMR, I am thinking that in the winter we will probably pick up a TMR mixer again. We might buy it this time. And probably I will take some of our excess and sell that as TMR. Um, so we'll need to set up some sort of process of mixing the tmr and then easily getting it into a trailer to take up to the forage dealer to sell i think probably using one of the govils is a bit advanced for the at this state in the 90s i don't know if anyone does know give me a shout was um stationary bailing of things like tmr a thing back in the 90s if it was that would be cool because we could make use of one of those uh, but yeah, I think you know, e even selling off this this summer silage cup, we're gonna have a lot of spare feed. I think this field, we might not get another cut off. Um, not sure where I'm gonna do the planting, but this is gonna go to barley, I think. I think we'll plant barley this year. Um, it's gonna be a big field of barley. Might, might cut it in half, actually and do I don't know and I'm hoping that you can't hear the noise of me I'm, I'm 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 kind of fidgeting with a clothes peg 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we do half and half. Maybe we do half wheat, half barley, something like that. I'm not planning to mix our own grain mix this winter. In fact, probably I'm going to sell off the, the grist mill. So I don't necessarily need to grow separate crops. I just need to grow a crop for straw. Unless I, yeah. So maybe we just do a big field of barley. Be kind of cool. We're going to get the straw off of the soybeans, which are growing in front of us as well. But I want to do one kind of traditional arable crop. And yeah, barley seems like one to do. At this point, I am going to say thank you to the patrons and YouTube channel members. I appreciate you guys all supporting the channel and all of the stuffs. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. So, a couple of rows to go. I have no idea how many bales that I have made. It's one of the things that frustrates me about multiplayer is losing the stats page. Um, I could check in the precision farming menu and see how much grass we got off of here from mowing it. Um, but I have since mown... In fact, I don't think there is anything to move. I'm, I'm struggling for zero grazing this month. Um, I cut a little bit too much, I think, or haven't kept enough back. So, yeah. I'm using the headlands of the new pasture to feed the cows at the moment. We've got lots of feed. It's not a problem. I just want to try and keep zero grazing if we can, because it's just... And what we do on here, I'm actually wanting to do an upgrade to the loading wagon soon, or the forage wagon. So the 7,000 litre capacity is a bit of a pain because I'm having to do quite often four loads every morning. And so it would be nice to get something that can hold maybe 20,000 litres. And uh, probably mean I just do the one trip. So probably, I'll probably have a look at some of the smaller base game ones, I think. Um, and I went for the one that we've got now because it's really cheap and it felt old. But with being in the 90s now, I think maybe we can just, I'll maybe just grab a base game. Same as we did with the baler here. Um, there aren't necessarily always the right age of mods for everything we want to do. So um, I haven't mentioned, I don't think the the bales are coming out at, i think it's five thousand liters you've probably seen as i've been going through yeah. which is quite a nice boost on the standard three and a half thousand liters that you'd get if you weren't heading it so yep five thousand liters so that extra you know the the there not being so much moisture in there means we can pack more grass in which means less bales to handle which is cool um as I said, these are probably going to go, they're probably going to sit in the field and then go straight onto a trailer to be sold. Unless I double down on the, the TMR idea and we keep them for that in the winter. Um, maybe make some late hay. I did late hay last year as well. Maybe make some late hay and uh, do a huge TMR mixing session, maybe baling session. I don't know. That would give us a really good income boost. It would give us a really good income boost. Okay. That's all the bailing done. Um, yeah, and talking about income boost, it's kind of weird that now, and it's why you know taking the, some of the money from the contracting doesn't bother me so much because whenever I do a contract, it's over at DS Agri. Um, you know, I'm not doing contracts for the dairy farm anymore. All of the contracting is done over at DS Agri. So yeah. The income that I get is from the milk essentially now and if I sell any manure or slurry and if we sell any excess forage. So uh, as I said the both slurry pits are pretty full again so I have broken out the the little slurry tanker and basically just throwing slurry on this field. Um, it's kind of amusing that I think Pete commented on the last maypole video or the one before about putting too much on and burning the grass and i knew i'd have done this job and you know basically i, I end up cracking this up to the maximum amount to to just get slurry out of the pit um, 
we can't have the, the slurry system backing up and overflowing so I really do need to get some more slurry capacity I have a slurry tank pit lined up I just don't have the funds to build it so and there are no government grants well not ones apart from the government subsidy sign which I do not use but there are no government grants in farm sim to help pay for that kind of thing so yeah you can see both slurry pits are pretty full uh, I could probably have sold some um once the bales are off of the pasture we or the old pasture we can get slurry on there as well to get it ready for the crop that's going in so i think we'll be okay and it's quite a trek to to go sell the slurry i do also want to get a bigger slurry tanker so yeah anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this if you did click the like button comments questions or suggestions below and i will see you next time on maple farm